Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Starrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic, who joins us weekly, the films, the personal history of David Copperfield, buoyancy, and the social dilemma. How are you, and did you like these? I'm doing okay, Jill, and I got three movies to talk about this week, which are of varying quality, but uh, mostly pretty good. Yeah, in fact, uh, at least one of them, Buoyancy, is really, really good. But let's start out with the one that's getting the most press, The Personal History of David Copperfield. I think that that title, uh, that long title, uh, there was, of course, this novel by the great Charles Dickens has been adapted before and usually it's just called David Copperfield. Uh, and there was a wonderful version many, many years ago uh, with uh, with W.C. Fields as Mr. Micawber. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's been in the movies for, for a long time. Now we have this new version and I expect that that long title, The Personal History of David Copperfield, is partly an homage to Dickens. Uh, it's a 19th century kind of title. And also maybe so that people won't think it's about the, the magician David Copperfield. And any case this is very much an adaptation of the 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 novel which i read many years ago a novel by charles dickens uh and this movie was uh, directed by uh, Armando Iannucci, who is known primarily as uh, the, the, the great creative force behind the TV series Veep. And I'm a big admirer of the TV series Veep, which of course is, is over now. Uh, and he's also made some movies before, and they tend to be very political. He's always been a maker of political comedy. So now he has given us a, um, a, a Charles Dickens adaptation. And yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it, it's a comedy. David Copperfield has a lot of humor in it. it. It's also very much a drama because it has a lot of things in it that are not so funny. Uh, but what Inucci has done is to make the movie quite political. Uh, his adaptation of David Copperfield quite political, in to some extent, in the same ways that Dickens's novels were almost always very political, especially in his treatment of the horrible indignities wrought by what we nowadays call inequality, the tremendous contrast between the undeserving rich and the very deserving poor, and the horrible tribulations that the poor suffer, and especially children who are thrust into the kinds of sufferings that the poor are are subject to. So again, Dickens' novels are very, very political in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I think they pretty much all are. I've read over the years pretty much all of them and yeah yeah these are very steady themes in dickens and they're very much there in david copperfield so in that sense even though it may be surprising that armando Iannucci, uh who made you know veep and some very political current day movies would make a, a an adaptation of a 19th century novel but i think he responded very much to the politics that are there in dickens and we certainly see uh you know poor uh, david as a child is sent off to work in a horrible factory where he's treated very unjustly and and it, it's all very very relevant to today, although it certainly is even more relevant to the 19th century. But uh, Iannucci has fascinatingly made the movie political in a different way, too, which is by, by, by in, in engaging in very, very um, uh, sort of je- uh, ra- race-blind and ethnicity-blind casting so that we have uh, an Indian actor playing David Copperfield. Uh, we have an, uh, an an actor of Asian extraction playing Mr. Wickfield. Uh, his uh, his daughter, uh, Agnes, is played by a mixed-race actress, and uh, her uh, Steerforth is, is played by uh, a white actor, and his mother is played by a black actor. So again, we have this, this great mix of ethnicities, uh, and, uh, and, and, and races uh, in the casting. And it, it's really quite marvelous. It, it certainly makes the movie more literally colorful than it might o- otherwise have been. And it keeps you on your toes. It's just sort of fun to think about. Now, there's a it's sort of a negative way of looking at this, this, uh, this, this colorblind casting, which is to say that in the 19th century, first of all, 
David Copperfield would not have had dark skin in, 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 in the middle of 19th century when, when the movie takes place. And if he did, uh, if he were somehow uh, for, uh, an Indian, uh, as the actor is, Dev Patel, who plays him, um, he, would, uh, he would probably have faced enormous amounts of prejudice that we simply don't see in the movie. What we see in the movie, he suffers because he's poor and he suffers because he comes into the clutches of very insensitive, unfeeling people. But, you know, certainly color, race, ethnicity has nothing to do with this. So, yeah, you know, you can say that, well, we're kind of imposing today's values uh, with this, uh, this, this, this colorblind casting. But again, it's very interesting to look at. It's very interesting to think about. And maybe most important of all, uh, they're all really good actors. Uh, and they really know what they're doing, and they keep the movie going very, 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 very lively uh, fashion. So the movie, uh, the, the the story moves along really, really quickly. Uh, sometimes I think that it's too sort of flippant and too cute and too almost gimmicky sometimes in its editing and, and the way comedy intrudes on the action from time to time. But by and large, I think it's a very successful adaptation of David Copperfield, and it certainly is a very 21st century adaptation in which our Mando Iannucci is able to bring his own values to the Charles Dickens story without in any way, I think, betraying the Charles Dickens story. I think Dickens would have very much approved of this version of it. I will also mention that once again, I earned my hazard pay this week, Jill. I took my life in my hands and I went and I saw the personal history of David Copperfield in a movie theater. And I will say I have not felt so safe uh, anywhere since the beginning of the uh, of the pandemic because I was the only person in the auditorium. <laughs> so, uh, you you know, I don't want to, you know, don't try this at home, kids. I'm a trained professional. Uh, but uh, I was glad to see it on a big screen. And I certainly hope that this doggone pandemic gets over really soon for a whole lot of reasons. And one of the reasons is so that movies like The Personal History of David Copperfield can be enjoyed on big screens, which is really, I think, where they, that is their natural habitat. Second movie I want to talk about today, Jill, is called Buoyancy, and it's an Australian movie, and it is very much streaming. You can easily find it. It was written and directed by Roth, Roth, excuse me, Rod Rathjen, and I got to say, Buoyancy is an absolutely ferocious movie about an absolutely ferocious topic, and again, it is very, very political, and I found it really, really absorbing, and it took hold of me by the teeth and wouldn't let me go, uh, and um, well, it, 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 let's just say it's quite a film. Uh, Buoyancy is the story of a young boy. He's around 14 years old in his you know, fairly early teens. And um, he, uh, he really, really, really is not happy in his rural home in Cambodia. Uh, he, uh, th this story is very much about Cambodian uh, and Thai characters. Uh, he is very unhappy and he decides to run away from home. He and a friend are going to run away from home and somehow get somewhere else and, 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 and get jobs and be self-sufficient. And then the friend cops out, so our main character uh, ends up making the journey by himself, and um, his name is Chakra, and he ends up getting a job on a fishing trawler uh, owned and operated by, uh, by some Thai people, and it very, very soon turns out that they are very evil and cruel people, and that the boy is not virtually, but actually a slave on this, uh, this, 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 this fishing, ve fishing vessel. So he has to learn uh, how to do the work, which mainly involves hauling nets out of the sea and shoveling dead fish into the hold of the trawler and so forth, uh, and doing all the things that he is told to do and that he is ordered to do. And uh, he realizes that none of the people, except the guys who are actually running the, the, the boat, uh, are there voluntarily. They're all basically enslaved. They're being held on this trawler. They cannot escape. They cannot get away. And when someone disobeys the owners in some serious way, they will take merciless revenge up to and including torture and death. So that's the kind of movie you're in for here. Uh, the thing is that at the end of the movie, it is dedicated to the kinds of victims like Chakra and like his fellow sufferers aboard the ship. And it is this, this is in no way gratuitously cruel uh, cinema. Uh, this kind of thing really happens. And this movie is basically, you know, it's a fiction film, but it's basically an expose, which is meant to show the kinds of horrific things that can go on and that do go on. Uh, so again, uh, the movie has to be, I think, cruel and sometimes almost unwatchable uh, because it is about things that are cruel and would be almost unwatchable if you were anywhere near where they were happening. Uh, it's a 
marvelously acted movie. You know, you see this film with all of these performers, some of whom are very young. Most of them are adults, but certainly the, the boy who plays Chakra, his name is Sarm Heng, is, 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 is about the age of Chakra, somewhere in his early to middle teens. And you just have to say, my goodness, where do people get this natural talent to be able to give such vivid and lifelike performances? It's just extraordinary. And the movie is extremely well directed. You really feel like you are in the midst of this horrific situation. And again, the movie just, well, at least for myself, it really kind of seized me and didn't let me go. And I felt by the end of it that I had been you know, shaken in the, the maw of a, of a great white shark or something for an hour and a half. But again, it's, it's, uh, it's in a worthy cause, and it certainly opens one's eyes to the sorts of things that still go on in today's so-called modern world, especially in the parts of the world that are not industrialized, but that are industrializing. I won't tell how the movie comes out, uh, but uh, there's a whole lot of harrowing moments along the way. So this is not a film to approach lightly. It is called Buoyancy, which is partly because, yeah, we're floating on the sea throughout almost the entire film on this on this fishing trawler. It's also, I think, a very ironic title. And it's in a way, it's a true title because, uh, you know, Chakra, the boy, does manage to stay afloat. Uh, right up, uh, you know, through the film. And uh, in that sense, it is buoyant, but uh, it doesn't make you feel like you're floating and popping up and down on pleasant waves. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a per- pretty ferocious film, but if you're in the mood for an hour and a half of really ferocious drama, uh, it's well worth seeing. And the final movie I want to talk about today, Jill, is called The Social Dilemma. And it is sort of a documentary fiction hybrid, which is to say it's, it's sort of mainly a documentary. It's certainly about a, you know, a true-to-life nonfiction subject. Uh, but it has uh, you know, actors in it, uh, and it has scenes that are acted and scripted and whatnot. And so, it's, again, it's a sort of a hybrid. It never tries to fool you. You can always tell when you're dealing with actors as opposed to real-life people. Uh, but it's, it's sort of a hybrid. And I, I think it would be much more effective if it were made as a straightforward documentary. I think that the, uh, the, the hybrid nature of it kind of, um, yeah, kind of messes it up a little bit. But that said, it's about an important topic. I wish it were a more uh, persuasive treatment of, of, of the topic. So what is The Social Dilemma about? Uh, as the title sort of suggests, it uh, reminds us maybe of The Social Network, that very, very interesting uh, movie about the and a fictional film uh, about uh, the, the, the founding of Facebook uh, and all of that. And nowadays, of course, Facebook is long past its founding and it's become a huge social force in the world. So the title, I think, deliberately reminds us of, 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 of that, that earlier film, The Social Network. But the social dilemma is about the dark side of all this. Uh, it's about what we have wrought, what uh, what has become of us uh, now that this uh, this force, Facebook, and all the other things like it, are very much very much a part of our world and and are very very controversial parts of our world. So the social dilemma, directed by Jeff Orlowski, uh, gets into all of this stuff partly through talking head interviews with a large number of people who are very influential in the world of the internet and who are to some extent skeptical. Of, of the world of the internet. I'll just mention one person who's in it, Jaron Lanier, who gives some pretty considerable uh, uh, interview stuff. And uh, he is one of the found the, the inventors of virtual reality and has been a, an, an, an internet skeptic for quite a number of years. Now, he's just one of the many people who are in it who are real life persons giving, giving interviews to the camera. And what basically these people are expressing is their doubts, uh, their misgivings, uh, their negative feelings. The movie is very, very much against uh, the, 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 the social network that has been introduced by Facebook and, and other such things. And there's a really a lot of talk about how manipulative these sites are. If there's one particular theme that emerges maybe more than any other over the course of the movie, uh, it's the idea that, the, uh, that, that, that Facebook and, 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 and similar uh, sites on the internet are designed on purpose to suck us in and to keep us clicking and to keep us looking, to basically hypnotize us, to mesmerize us, to fascinate us in a literal sense so that we can't get away from it. Now, a lot of this strikes me as, yes, there's a lot of truth to this, but also there's a lot of alarmism here. Uh, The movie really does... uh, paint such a negative picture that after a while I was really not convinced by it at all. I don't feel that I am purely a puppet, a pawn uh, 
uh, in the grip of, of, of the internet. Uh, and the movie kind of suggests that we are. Uh, the movie really does uh, uh, suggest that we, in a way, we have no control over this ourselves and that it is the manipulative and hypnotic nature of the internet that is responsible for all of the evils of the internet. Well, it is just not that simple. There are many other things that, uh, that feed into these phenomena, including our own willingness uh, to be seduced and to be fascinated and to be in the grip of these things. So I think the movie is very simplistic, and I think that it's switching between documentary and sort of semi-fictional modes is basically tricky. It's basically a kind of a gimmick, so I was not entirely persuaded by the movie. However, it raises all these interesting issues. It raises them in ways that got me thinking, uh, and even the fact that I was thinking about what's wrong with this movie. Uh, even that was a positive thing, uh, because again, it's another way of thinking about these issues, which I think deserve a whole lot of consideration by all of us. We should not be unthinkingly in the grip of the internet, even though I think this movie suggests too uncritically that we are simply in the grip of the internet. So The Social Dilemma is a movie to look at, I think, you know, with all of your senses and all of your mental activities alert. And if you do that, I think it's a worthwhile movie to see and to think about, even though I think it's deeply flawed in all kinds of ways. So that is my pretty variegated story this week, Jill. For which we thank you, as ever, David Sterrett, Films in Focus, The Films, The Personal History of David Copperfield, Buoyancy, and The Social Dilemma. <laughs>